Good evening. I am Richard S. McGee, and you are watching The Learning Tree. I have with me this evening some very distinguished people who live in the town of Wellesley, but they're really people of the world. And starting to my immediate right is Jalisa Jones. Jalisa is an author, writer, and currently a librarian. <laughs> Welcome, Jalisa. Thank you. Next to her is attorney Paul Murray. Paul Murray is a civil rights attorney and is doing a great job of trying to clean up the issues that prevail in the area of discrimination. Next to them is Michelle Chalmers. Michelle Chalmers is the president of the World of Wellesley and a high-flying salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> Next there is Michael Price. Michael Price is a businessman who is a former president of the Rotary Club of Wellesley. Welcome to all of you. Glad to have you here. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Now, I want to start out a little bit here. First place, the Black History Month began in 1926 by Carter Wooding and did not become, it was called the Negro Week and did not become the Black history one until 1976. In February became the, the month because it coincided with the birth of Lincoln and Douglas, Frederick Douglas. Am I correct in that? Anybody want to correct me on that? Thing? All right. So now, in moving on to that, in 1908, a very important thing happened. The NAACP, National Association of Colored People, was founded and it was founded because there were a lot of hostility going on and the, the group of, uh, of well-intended citizens decided to form an organization to address the problems that were going on. So that's how the NAACP came into being. While we're going to start this off, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how all this started back in the days of slavery. The slave trade began in 1600 and, and continued until 1866. It did not hit this, well, this part of the world, the Americas, until the 17th century, or at least in 1619, the judge introduced the first slaves to Jamestown, Virginia. And from that point, it continued and, uh, on, and I, now I need a little help in this. Who can tell me a little bit more what happened after the first group of slaves were brought to this country? and landed in Jamestown. Yes, anybody? You're going to make me do the whole I think, I think you stumped us, Richard. I mean, we, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we, sadly, we were. Uh, well, there were more than 12 million slaves that were, that were sent to this country. Uh, only 388,000 of them ever reached here alive. Mm. And uh, as a result, we, we, we developed a very, very vigorous trade and, and, and slavery and trading and slavery. And they, the slave trade was very much dependent on the crops that were grown by the, by, the, by, the, by the farmers, particularly. Most of the states in the country had slave owners. So now, anybody got any information on that? Well, I have um, learned uh, over the years um, about James DeWolf of the DeWolf family mm -hmm. uh, out of Providence. And he has um, uh, an institute that he has created um, based on his family history, uh, learning that not only was Providence one of the ports where many of the ships came in, mm -hmm. it was actually the port where most of the slave ships came in. So Providence is, um, rich and deep in history of the slave trade. And the DeWolf family has opened up the Tracing Institute. And he- Where's that located? In Providence, Providence uh, in okay. Rhode Island. I don't know if it's actually in Providence or in the outskirts of Providence, area, but yeah. the Tracing Center, if you go to Tracing Center, um, I don't know if it's .com or .org, um, you can read about the DeWolf family. So this is a, a white man uh, whose family owned um, hundreds of slaves mm -hmm. um, and basically was able to uh, create their wealth 
um, and their um, legacy on the backs of enslaved Africans. Mm -hmm. And so he has made it his life work um, now to teach um, and created the tra Tracing Institute. He does speeches in independent schools, uh, talks with children, um, and just really helps to educate people uh, because I think that we think about slavery and we think about the South. Right. We think that most enslaved people were in the South when actually that is not true. Um, and so that, again, is really, you know, why I think it's important to start at the beginning is, is really to try to bring forth as much of the truth in terms of this was a problem in most of this country. Um, that everyone obviously looked at slavery as a way to have free labor, to be able to you know, have your crops taken care of um, mm -hmm. and be an economic sort of force. And, you know, when you think about these days, and I think one of the things that has resonated with me is I think about the early 1600s and that the emancipation did not happen until, you know, on paper, until the mid-1800s. That's 250 years. I mean, we have to, 250 years mm -hmm. yes. that this country had, literally on the backs of enslaved people created this country okay black people literally if it was not for black people this country would not be america they built the country they absolutely built yes. the country they, so they. you have to in 25 years and my son said to me you know mom that was only 150 years ago that mm -hmm. slave slavery ended mm -hmm. he's like that's not that long ago mm -hmm. no. And so, you know, it's one thing about learning about these dates, but then actually to think about it is that 150 years ago, you know, I have, you know, my grandparents, you know, just my grandfather just passed away at 98. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, 100 years ago when he was, came from this country from Italy. Yes. Slavery had only been abolished for 50 years on paper. Now, obviously, it was still um, happening in the country. But mm -hmm. so, you know, that I just think, you know, to really critically think about these numbers, critically think about these slavery, and we talk about, you know, the word slaves. I like to use the word enslaved human beings or okay. enslaved people, All right. okay, instead of using the word slave. Um, enslaved people. We have to bring humanity back to this idea and what happened and to really be able to understand really how this country was formulated and why. Mm -hmm. So that, sorry, but that is just... That's, that's, good, that's good okay. information. That's I'd like to add <coughs> one thing, and, and I'm, I'm not here to try to be an apologist for Massachusetts, but Massachusetts has a, a unique position in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, uh, one thing that is not terribly well known, I think many people know about the 254th, the, mm -hmm. the, the black regiment, regiment yeah. that fought in the Civil yeah. War, mm -hmm. which was unique, but... Yeah. Uh, but long before that, I think in around 16, I don't have the date of the case, but the Massachusetts uh, Supreme Judicial Court, speaking from the perspective of our legal system, uh, invalidated a contract of ownership for mm -hmm. a slave uh, or an enslaved person, mm -hmm. uh, which was the first uh, uh, court in the U.S. to take a, a look at the constitutionality and the validity of a contract. And so, I mean, as I say, I'm not trying to paint a wonderful picture. And Go ahead, you can apologize. There were, there were, plenty, there were, there were <laughs> plenty of... No one's going to hold there, you accountable. There were plenty of, plenty of, of slave owners in Massachusetts, but, okay. but Massachusetts also did take this, this step mm -hmm. uh, of, of, uh, of invalidating that contract. Mm -hmm. So it w legally speaking, it was much harder to own. Were there any slavery. states that didn't have slavery, to your knowledge? I don't know about Maine. Yeah, I yeah. Don't but Maine, of course, was part of Massachusetts for un until anybody know yeah. when that changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you got something to add to this, Jay? Uh, no, uh, I'm from Mississippi originally, so uh, uh, slavery was alive and well and thriving in Mississippi. Uh, the main crop oh, was yes. cotton. Mm -hmm. um, on the like South Carolina side, it was tobacco. Uh, each state seemed to have, you know, a certain crop that they had to have enslaved people, mm -hmm. um, you know, produce for them. Um, but I know that a lot of the abolitionists and 
uh, some of the early thinkers of, um, against slavery were from the Massachusetts area. This was somewhat Quakers. Of a, yeah. Um, so I'm not apologizing either, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is unique in the, mm -hmm. in the scheme of things. Yeah, Michael? Yeah, I was going to say, but there were some clear differences. I mean, uh, it, you know, according to the history, there's some clear differences between the North and South in terms of how black people, uh, African uh, descendant people were, were treated. That, mm -hmm. you know, that there was this whole notion that they were, uh, and again, I don't know the exact dates, but it seemed that certain of the states in the North, I don't know if they abolished slavery or, or, or that somehow or another, because you had this whole runaway slave act and all of that business. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't, don't, don't fully, you know, I can really speak to the, the technical you know, sort of the, the, the reality of that, but uh, perhaps you may know from a legal standpoint, uh, you know, Paul, if they're exactly what that meant in terms of uh, were there a group of states that has essentially had abolished slavery ahead of the Constitution and ahead of, uh, you know, the, the, the full U.S. government abolishing slavery? Well, the question really is the extent to which local law enforcement would enforce mm -hmm. statutes that, that uh, supported the, the slave system. Yeah. And the, in the North, there was, I think, more of a reluctance to enforce those laws. Mm -hmm. uh, having talked about the, the Massachusetts Supreme Court case invalidating a slave purchase contract, uh, I, I also read the other day that there was uh, at least one instance where uh, somebody in Massachusetts uh, sought to enforce the, uh, the Runaway Slave Act, mm -hmm. and, and they did get support from local law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But I think that that was something that varied uh, uh, around the nation. Mm -hmm. And I think it was much less of, of uh, prevalent, obviously, than it, than it was in the, in the deeper south. But it did. I mean, the, you know, obviously in the north did <coughs> start to see uh, relinquishing. You saw a lot of people um, in their wills, um, you know, freeing their slaves mm -hmm. and uh, freeing their enslaved people. And that, so you would see that happening in the North. And I just learned something. Um, I love the show uh, Finding Your Roots with Professor uh, Henry Louis Gates. Mm -hmm. And I had just learned uh, he was um, doing the, the family history of LL Cool J mm -hmm. and uh, found out that um, now tell his... Us who, tell us who, who that is. LL Cool J is a um, music um, person. He's a rapper. Now I think he um, might even own a, you know, a record label or helps you know, mm -hmm. young people to get in the music business, but mm -hmm. um, I don't think he does too much singing or, or rapping right now, but... Um, he's an actor. No, he's, he's oh, he does TV. acting, yeah, too? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I mean, I have seen him in a couple yeah. of things, yeah. And he hosts the Grammys every year. Yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> they don't watch that. So LL, um, basically, they traced his family back um, to Ohio, hmm. and so they could go back almost six to seven generations and found out that his family were never... They enslaved. were free people. Wow. Yeah. So they were yeah. always free. Yeah. So um, there is now how did unique. That, how did that come about? Oh, now? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> is that um, you know I think that m that people decided in certain areas mm -hmm. and certain um, you know Ohio seems to be one of those states that literally said we don't allow it. It's not going to happen here. Into our state. Into our state, and that's where you saw. You know, obviously, you have the Underground Railroad mm -hmm. yeah. that was able to come out of the South into the states that they knew mm -hmm. that, you know, you weren't fully protected <coughs> because of the Runaway Slave Act. Act um, yeah. But you, Canada would be, you know, obviously the the right. ideal to get to, but to be able to go through some of the southern states, through Ohio, through Virginia, through. Well, um, what do we know about the Underground Railroad? What was this? What was this tracks? Which wh how, where did it originate? Where did it, end, <coughs> did it end? I have this recorded, um, and I and I would have brought it if I had known you would ask this question. <laughs> of course, you know I'd ask. Um, <laughs> but it, it's it's very unique. But it, it I know from Mississippi, which is the point I start from. Okay. And it goes to Memphis, Tennessee, and then um, it kind of veers. Uh, through Kentucky and goes um, Virginia and um, Maryland, um, Maryland and D.C. and Pennsylvania, yeah. and it goes to New York and it goes. Is New York, to the end point. No, it goes all Canada. the way to Martha's Vineyard yeah. to Massachusetts. To uh, yeah, Massachusetts, Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, we know Vineyard it went through Boston. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. All right. Boston. Uh -huh. There's supposed to be a house in Wellesley that yes, was on it. Yes, there is. Yeah, there is a house. There are four houses in Wellesley. In Wellesley. Right. Yeah. They're on, on Linden it. Street. Wow. That yellow house, right when you go over the bridge from, yeah. the, from the where the playhouse used to be, you go over the bridge uh -huh. where the Christian Science Church yes. is, and you take a left. It's right there on the right. It's the house right next to that church. That yellow house is one of them that is mm -hmm. on the Underground Railroad. I don't know mm -hmm. um, what the other three are. I'm you guessing know, it's on that road out there. Do you have any stats on how many people might have been bought out of the South on the Underground Railroad? Or? I do have some information on that. Well, Harriet yeah. Tubman brought out 800 yeah. people herself. herself. Mm -hmm. How many? Yeah, 800. 800. Harriet 800, Tubman. okay. Mm -hmm. That's a little larger than the number that got here, but uh, there are more. We understand that only 388,000 got here, so uh, 800, uh, eight, 8, 000. 800, not 800,000. Oh, 800,000. 800, oh, I yeah. want to no. increase yeah. this thing. Harriet Tubman, <laughs> she, was, she was working it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you were listening, weren't you? <laughs> yes, yes. Working over yeah, she was double, 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 double time, huh? <laughs> About 800. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And any I idea of what happened to those people who escaped uh, slavery? On, uh, any any history or any understanding of what happened to them what, eventually? Many of them, you know, became free people and lived free lives and yeah. and went on to prosper and have good good lives. There were communities, um, I think, including yeah, the Quakers, that for example, supported them. who they had like associations mm -hmm. and they would su supply. Uh, what people needed when they were mm -hmm. getting first getting free and, and when did it become inactive? At what point in time did it become inactive? Or when was it last used? Any idea? Probably once when they abolished the slavery. The Emancipation, yeah. the emancipation yeah. Proclamation. Yeah. 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 At that point or after? After that. After the Emancipation yeah. Proclamation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's look at the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, uh, President Lincoln, who was a Republican, and decided that, uh, what I understand, that his, his reason for the whole process and the Civil War was based on economics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with slavery. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the impression I have, too. Mm -hmm. But the uh, abolition of slavery was a, an economic problem mm -hmm. because of yeah. the tremendous investment of the Southern landowners, in particular, right. in their slaves. And uh, they, that it was it was a great. They, I think someone said that they sometimes would hand them down, hand slaves down to to their children. Yes. And yes. and it was just a it was a, a the, I think the big one of the one of the big struggles that the legislature had when they were uh, talking about how to deal with slavery around the time of the Civil War was how to uh, compensate these people if they were going to free the slaves. Mm -hmm. sure. Isn't that one of the reasons why the South wanted to fight, in effect, yes. you know, because it affecting their, their livelihood, their way of life, their yeah. economic existence, as it were, where yeah. it was going to be severely impacted by the freeing of, of the... Their free slaves. labor. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when the Civil War began, uh, Michael? I'm going to probably get it wrong, but I'm going to say 1861. Uh, Sounds like you were there. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, Do you so. remember <laughs> when the <laughs> yeah. Fort Sumter. That is true. <laughs> Fort Sumter. Yeah. At Fort Sumter? Yeah, I suited up. That's yes. in <laughs> North Carolina. I think. Uh, North Carolina. Yeah, of and when did it end? 1865. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who won? <laughs> we're, still, we're, still sure. we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> that true. You have any idea of how many casualties there were in that war? 600,000? Yeah, more casualties than any war ever. And how was that divided among the armies? Well, both the North and South suffered tremendous losses. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, phenomenal losses. Mm -hmm. the, the most loss of life ever. At, in, in war for the country. I think what I saw about the 254th was that I think when they uh, they attacked, I think it was might have been Fort Sumter when the, yeah. when the North was trying to recapture yeah. it uh, from the rebels, and um, I think that they lost 75 percent of their mm -hmm. of their 80 percent mm. of their men. Mm. <laughs> I just think it's you know it's interesting to look at the history of the Civil War and think about you know, the, the sides, if you will, and who was fighting mm -hmm. uh, for which side. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when I think about the South and I think about 
obviously, okay, you can understand that these rich, wealthy white people, obviously, for their economic interests, they want free labor. Um, but it just blows my mind that they could get white people to fight in this war that had nothing. So the rich white people weren't going to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the wealthy landowners were not fighting. No. But they got the slave patrol mm -hmm. and they got the, you know, white people who had nothing yeah. to fight that war yeah. for them. So how do you do that? But they also got blacks to fight the war. Well, but that I can understand. Which, which okay, so if I'm an enslaved yeah. African and you tell yeah. me if you fight, you're going to, you know, I'm going to free you. Okay, so you will get your freedom. Weren't there blacks freedom. on both sides of the... Oh, sure, absolutely. Not so yeah. many on the no. south side. Not so yeah. many on the south. But what? there were black people no. that, There were no you know, blacks again, in the Confederate Army? Not many. But not there many. were black no. people that believed that if they fought in the war that they would be freed. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I can and most of them fought totally the understand Northern, that. But mostly, yes, Army. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and actually Lincoln came to get black people in the south mm -hmm. saying, hey, if you come over here, you know, we'll let you fight in this and there you any will be. outstanding yeah. black person that uh, fought in that war that you can remember? Well, one outstanding person to me is a man, uh, Robert Smalls. Okay, and tell us about Smalls. Um, he was a man, he was a slave mm -hmm. um, under the Confederacy, and his uh, person he worked for uh, was the captain of a ship. In fact, it was the, uh, the exact name of the ship mm -hmm. was the uh, Confederate ship CSS Planter. Mm -hmm. And um, how they spell that? P L U S S. I mean, I'm sorry, CSS Planter, P L A N T E R. Mm -hmm. And um, every day, Robert would watch the captain steer the ship and learn everything that he was doing. And um, he would watch diligently. And one day, when the captain and his men were off the ship, uh, Robert got his family and friends, and he dressed as the captain. <laughs> and he steered that ship through five checkpoints, Confederate checkpoints, into <laughs> Union waters, <Wow>. and freed <laughs> himself and and his friends and family. Wow. Where was this race? <laughs> Where were this? Great. <laughs> this was uh, this was in the South, um, and he actually, you know, he commandeered this ship, and he was the first black man to command a U.S. Navy ship, and he persuaded <laughs> President <laughs> Abraham Lincoln to allow blacks to fight uh, in the Union. Wow. Oh, he went to Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what state was he? Um. The state, I don't know. It was in the South. Okay. It was in the South. All right. Um, Any other um, notable? Robert Any? Smalls. He, he is Robert someone. Robert S-M-A-L-L. -L, small. -L. Yeah, like, uh, who was Biggie Smalls? Biggie Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There you go. Smalls. <laughs> Robert Smalls. Mm. Uh, but I, I just well, thought he that was small. phenomenal. That's just yeah. phenomenal, you know. Um, and, you know, we're always uh, spoken of as, you know, being illiterate and not smart, and, and yet this man figured all this out. And not courageous, you know what I mean? That's very courageous. Exactly. To have done something very like courageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you think of any others that were? Out? Well, one of the reasons I think, Richard, is, is why, at least I'm having trouble thinking of more, but as I understand it, even in Army units that were made up of African Americans, mm -hmm. Uh, the officers had to be white, and, yes. I, and I think that persisted for a long time. Yes. So I don't think it was that easy for uh, blacks or former slaves or whatever to to uh, get into the upper levels. There was one outstanding battle in which blacks participated. Do you remember that battle? Yeah, it was portrayed that. in the uh, movie Glory. Mm. Yeah, the, the S S you, battle you, you remember the, to recapture Fort Sumter. Yeah, yeah. Fort Sumter. Right. But those were white officers, I think. Yeah, yeah. Robert Gould that's Shaw. The, that's was the, the right. That's yeah. the, I think that's the biggest battle in which blacks took place. Yes. In, in the whole and war. And yes. they paid the price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. All right. Let's move on and talk a little bit about Reconstruction. Can, can I mention one more thing about slavery that that we've talked about the the fact 
we've talked often about how uh, landowners liked having uh, free labor, mm -hmm. but uh, there have been analyses done that I read about back in college that uh, made the point that even though you, you, the, 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 the enslaved people were not being uh, paid wages, mm -hmm. they were, it was not a particularly economically strong system. Mm -hmm. uh, among, among other things, uh, people who are enslaved don't always enjoy what they're doing. And so, you know, somehow maybe that axe handle would get broken or that, in fact, they had special tools, they said they called them slave tools, mm -hmm. that, that, that uh, 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 but this all added to the expense. Plus there was, of course, the expense of oversight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and, and, and they had to feed uh, people. So I, I just wanted to suggest that uh, as, 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 as reasonable as it may sound f that Southerners wanted to protect their investment in these other human beings, uh, they were a little bit th th uninformed uh, or misinformed about uh, the economic strength of that, of that uh, system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. On to Reconstruction. There was a lot of history made and, and a lot of progress doing, made during the can you, uh, do you have any information on what some of that progress was? I know it was in, in politi politics, uh, there was a great deal of uh, progress. What do you got, Jalisa? Well, one of the great uh, joys for me was that um, from Mississippi, there were, there were two senators from Mississippi right after Reconstruction, mm -hmm. uh, Hiram, Hiram Revels and I Blanche Bruce. How do you spell those names? Uh, Hiram is H-I-R-A-M, yeah. Revels, R-E-V-E-L-S, uh -huh. and Blanche Bruce. Mm -hmm. And Hiram served two years, and Blanche served the entire six years in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they were both from Mississippi and were both Republicans mm -hmm. at, at that time. Were they African Americans? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what I remember about Reconstruction was that it was during that time period when even though the enslaved persons had been liberated by the Emancipation Proclamation, mm -hmm. the social structure was such that they instituted the so-called Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's when segregation, the, 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 the most painful, I think. What did those laws provide? What did the Jim Crow law provide for? It was segregation. It was yeah. uh, th they provided that 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 the black people couldn't do so a lot of things. I don't separate. Think, I don't know unequal. about voting. Yeah, yeah sep definitely separate and definitely separate not equal. equal. They were tr they couldn't ride yeah. in the same train cars. So I, public accommodations and all of that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Everything. Well, owned businesses. Yeah. And Everything. Loans. Right. I mean, there's yeah, all kinds of stuff. Housing. Yeah. You know. What do you remember about the Reconstruction, Michael? I think some of the same things that we've sort of been saying, obviously the political I think is the thing that's most prominent in terms of what, what's talked about from a historical standpoint. Uh, in terms of uh, were, there, were there particular economic gains, gains that happened during that, that time frame, I, I would hope, but I, I, I don't know, ex I don't have any specific examples. I believe, that, did Frederick Douglass come out of that, that period of reconstruction? Yes. Was mm -hmm. he a part of that? Mm -hmm. and, uh, there were other luminaries, such as Emmett Heap, being one really towering luminary. But uh, but again, I, I, I do know the politics was was an area that again you hear most about. And yeah, you know, there could have been other areas. There may have been other areas in cultural areas in terms of the arts. There could have well, been give some me some specifics and other areas in which uh, there was progress. Well, well again, what I'm saying is that I'm not 100 percent sure, and I can't yeah. cite them. But okay. uh, but I'm, I'm if someone here. Uh, on the panel can, can, can share some of their own knowledge about an area uh, uh, and during the Reconstruction time period when, when blacks had made progress that, uh, that otherwise we weren't able to make. I mean, it may be Well, one of the um, areas was uh, the Fist Jubilee Singers. Ah. And the Fist Jubilee Singers. I know about those of you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and in 1867, th these group the, this group, they were all former slaves. Wow. Um, and they knew how to read and write. They had been taught how to read and write. Uh, and so when they became free, um, a group of uh, white people actually had um, wanted to, to educate them. Mm -hmm. 
and they had raised money and they actually started Fisk University. Hmm. And so the singers, um, led by a young woman who was about 18 years old and, and a, you know, a recently freed slave, um, uh, Ella Shepard, mm -hmm. got a, a group together and said, why don't we go on the road singing and raising money for our college? We can raise money for the college and we can make the college endure. And that's what they did. They took to the road and uh, they t went on their first world tour hmm. in 1871. Wow. They performed in London in 1873. Yeah, I was there. And <laughs> 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 there, Richard was there. Front row seat, right? Yes. And, and to this day, you know, Fisk University is one of the, the strongest uh, historically black colleges. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. And they have a, a Fisk songbook. Yes. Which we still, uh, actually in my church choir, we <coughs> sing selections out of that. Really? From the yeah. Jubilee Singers? From the Jubilee Singers, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. They are, they were just wonderful. <laughs> yeah. How about the historical black colleges and universities? There were uh, a number of these schools that came about during the, during that period of time. Yeah. Fisk is in Atlanta, isn't it? It's in Tennessee. It's in Tennessee. Knox, uh, Nashville. Uh, Nashville, yeah, okay. Tennessee. Yeah. Well, there's Howard, of course. That's Howard, yes. Probably the best known. Yeah. Well, Morehouse, of Morehouse. course. Yes. Morehouse. Morehouse. Yeah. Bellman. Hampton Bellman. Institute. Bellman, Bellman. 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 Yes. Bellman. Mm -hmm. um, um, what else? Ham Hampton Institute Hampton in Virginia. Hampton Institute, Virginia, yeah. yeah. And there's one in Baltimore, right? Um, in the, um, what is the college in Baltimore? Oh, uh, I know John what you Hopkins? mean. No, no. no. Sort of like yeah, right. um, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Morgan, the Morgan, Morgan State. Yeah, yes, that was one of them. And and there's one for you, Cheney University. Cheney. Yes. That's so in Pennsylvania. Yeah, in Pennsylvania, yeah. 19, 1837. Uh, and that um, was one Mary of the McLeod earlier ones. started yeah. the college. And, and what about Wilberforce hmm. in Ohio? Was that a? Uh, hmm. Yeah, Wilberforce. Yeah. Right. That yeah. was financed by a white guy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Wilberforce, Wilberforce yeah. was a British yeah. abolitionist, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, got any more ideas there? <laughs> All right, we're moving on. What about the legacy of slavery? What is the legacy of slavery? What you're near thinking and understanding? What is the legacy of slavery? Well, um, I, I have a wonderful quote here, and I think... Um, it really, really, to me, sums up everything about slavery and black people and America and everything mm. quite eloquently. Um, it's from a book by John O. Killens, The Black that. Man's Burden. Spell that out. K-I-L-L-I-N-S. Mm -hmm. And he says, quote, our emotional chemistry is different from, from white Americans. Your joy is very often our anger, and your despair our hope. Most of us came here in chains, and many of, he of you came here to escape your chains. Hmm. Your freedom was our slavery, and therein lies the bitter difference in the way we look at life. We are not fighting for the right to be like you. We respect ourselves too much for that. When we advocate freedom, we mean freedom for us to be black or brown and you to be white and yet to live together in a free and equal society. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think that is pretty profound. I think it kind of sums it all up. Um, um, it's particularly when he says, you know, um, your freedom was our slavery mm -hmm. and therein lies the bitter differences in the way we look at life. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on the legacy? What I was going to offer is I think the legacy is the, in some ways, and I think this is part of what we're grappling with, because we're still grappling with these problems, I think in very yes. big and important ways, and yes. we're actually making a little bit of progress here and there, but in any event, we're still grappling. And I think part of why we have to be still grappling is because I think slavery has given a lot of people uh, the, the permission 
to think that there are other people who are inferior right. because of their color of their skin. And I, yeah. I, I, wish, I wish that weren't so, but I, yeah. think, that, I think that is uh, truly part of the yeah. legacy of slavery. And I think that part of the history of the Reconstruction was, as I said, the, 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 there's a, the, lots of books about this, caste and class in a southern town, yeah. talking about how about the, 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 the less affluent white people mm. Mm. And, the, and the niches <coughs> that they occupied and that the, it, it, people's psychological structure was such that they had to have somebody to look down on. Mm. Yes. And that's why yes. when, when the, the, the yeah. slaves, uh, when the slave persons were liberated, uh, that's why these laws were passed to try to, and, and ultimately in, resulting in, the, in, in segregation, Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that, that it was to try to maintain a social yes. system, a social structure, yes. in which some people could put their absolutely their 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 their, their social their self worth on being absolutely. somehow superior to yeah. to other people, and 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 uh, as I say, I think this is what we're still grappling with, and and I think e today, well, I, I, maybe I shouldn't mention this, but because it's not good to speak ill of the no longer living, but a, a, a justice of the U.S. Supreme Court mm. not too long ago mm. commented it, it, when the court was uh, considering another uh, challenge to affirmative action, mm -hmm. said maybe black people should go to second tier and third tier colleges where they'll feel more comfortable, mm. reflecting a level of, of stereotypic yes. racist thinking mm. that has no place in no. American this society. Twenty sixteen, Paul. Uh, that, that 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 that's not. That can't be true. At <laughs> any rate, right. geez, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad you pointed that out. He's made, he's made, it, he's made it all up. He's making it all up. Well, I want to step back a little bit and talk a little bit about the abolitionists. We didn't talk much about the abolition. Abolition. Tell me a little bit of what you know. I understand about the abolition movement. What do you understand about it? Uh, there were a lot of troublemakers, that's for sure. <laughs> they were. And, and the right, in the right places in the right time. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think race amity is a concept uh, when we talk about race amity. And actually, the state of Massachusetts, um, the governor just um, acknowledged mm -hmm. um, the other day, I think Tuesday, mm. uh, race amity day now is the second Sunday mm. uh, of the month. And uh, that's spearheaded by my very, very good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Smith. Yeah, you're just um, jumping ahead, though. I want to talk about the well, abolition. No, but I, I, yeah. I mean, I think abolitionist movement is yeah. race amity. Mm. I mean, you're yeah. talking about, you know, if if white people did not help enslaved Africans, you know, it would be a totally different outcome. Yeah. Okay. So we have to look at, um, you know, and I think it's an important part of history to understand, especially when we are uh, educating our young children mm -hmm. um, that we need everyone. Okay, that civil rights leaders don't have to be black. Mm -hmm. Okay, that we need everyone. And so that race amity thinking going back to abolitionists and you think about white people and the, and really, you know, the, the danger that they put themselves in to be on the Underground Railroad, mm. to hide uh, enslaved people in their homes, um, to take care of them and to make sure that you know, again, they were doing the right thing. Morally, they were doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But again, they're putting themselves in danger that they did not have to do. Um, and a lot of them suffered for it. A lot of so them did suffer caught, for no. it. A lot of white people were, no. were killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I just think that that concept of race amity, I think, is mm -hmm. important that, um, you know, that we are one human family um, and that we do obviously need to work together. And I would hope, you know, if anything comes out of this history as we learn, and I try to, you know, obviously educate my children mm -hmm. and, we, and we try to educate our children that, um, you know, always working together to do the right thing um, is what you, you should do. Off the top of your heads, name as many famous leading up to King, many famous uh, black uh, People who exceeded, excel, like uh, Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass. Uh, uh, du Bois. Yeah. Oh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Yeah, yeah. Who? Malcolm yeah. X. Who? Um, 
Malcolm X? Malcolm X. No, we don't want to get to Mary. Yeah. We'll get there. We want to go fast. We don't go to Mary. A Philip Randolph. What? A Philip Randolph. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Garvey. Carver. The Carver. Right. Mm -hmm. now, tell a little bit about what they did. They talk about them. Yeah. What, what, what did Marcus Garvey do? Marcus Garvey wanted us all to go back to Africa. Back, back right. to Africa. Mark, <laughs> Marcus Garvey, they'd say Marcus Garvey was a troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think it's he, he was too that you can't paint like black people all with a broad brush that everyone no. felt the same way. No, and um, because they did. No. And they and shouldn't. No, and they shouldn't. Um, There's a bumper sticker about people being troublemakers that I think it says, you know, polite women rarely make history or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what black man indicted in 1923 for mail fraud, pardoned in 27, and ordered deported as an undesirable by President Calvin Coolidge, established the Black Eagle Flying Corps, the Universal Black Cross Nurses, the Black Star Steamship Line, mm -hmm. and the Universal African Motor Corps? <laughs> Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Marcus Garvey. I didn't know that. Wow. Marcus yeah. Garvey, who said all black people should get on the ship and go back to Africa <laughs> <Yeah>. immediately. <laughs> he yeah. was a little bit disappointed. No one got on the ship. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and not even not, he didn't even get on the ship. What what he, he <laughs> wasn't he deported? Was um, he deported? Cool. No. Deported him. It sounds huh? like. It said uh, he was. Um, um, ordered to be deported by right. President Coolidge. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> not, not sure if he actually went anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think it's important to talk about uh, black history, and, and that's why I woke, wrote the Black History Challenge, which mm -hmm. ran in the, um, the Wellesley Towns for this month mm -hmm. for uh, every once a week for four weeks. And I had all kinds of people, young and old, black and white, um, um, really elderly people, <laughs> young people, all kinds of people saying um, that they were so happy I had done it because they didn't know this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, people would say to me, I got one right. Mm -hmm. I knew one name. Oh, boy. You know, so... The point of the uh, challenge was to introduce all the others. Mm -hmm. There are so many hundreds of thousands of black people who did things, you know, to the building of right the, there, of there the country. <laughs> yes. You that's know, a big book. That's a big book. That means a lot of people did a lot of things. Mm. And, <laughs> Michelle, we were just talking about um, the young woman. You know, people talk about uh, Rosa, Rosa Parks. Mm. You want to tell them about the yeah. real story about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of Claudette Coleman. Yes. Claudette Coleman was 15 years old and yeah. was truly and honestly the first, the first Rosa Parks. The first to she refuse to give up her seat on the bus. 15 years old, had, you know, riding the bus coming out of school, had her books in her lap yeah. and refused to give up her seat. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was tired and um, You're getting she ahead was of the sick game of it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, I you're think ahead of the game. what's Let's exciting about is that what, what we think Douglas we know, know there's more. Yeah, well, yeah. We, yeah. we're yes. going there. You're yes. getting ahead of the game. Well, it's already eight. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Frederick Douglass? What do you know about Frederick Douglass? Wow. Yeah. I know Frederick. Frederick was an abolitionist. He mm -hmm. was um, born a slave. Born a slave. He was a thinker. Mm -hmm. He um, he was a rabble rouser. Um, he rose to be greatly uh, respected by many of the whites that were like against him and his kind. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, because he, kind, okay. he could he could make an argument. You know, mm -hmm. um, he 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 was just you know like an extraordinary man mm -hmm. that was seen. I mean, what about Mary McLeod Bethune? I mean, Ireland. Yes. Um, honors. Yes. Douglas. Yes. What well, do you know about Mary McLeod Bethune? She started a school. Uh, she was so much an advocate for young girls being educated that she started a school. Um, and as she was going along with her school, mm -hmm. um, 
the Rockefellers. Um, okay, her tireless advocacy for educating young black girls in Daytona Normal School um, in Daytona, Florida, attracted the attention of uh, philanthropists John D. Rockefeller and James Gamble, who owned the Ivory Soap Company. Mm -hmm. They gave her money to build a hall, mm -hmm. and she built a hall which became, you know, the brick and mortar school. And later on, she, um, in, in, in 1907, the school was built. Mm -hmm. And later on, uh, she merged that school with a boys' school. Um, so it became Bethune-Cookman. Where's that located? That is in Daytona Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the historical black colleges. Is that still in existence? Still, still in existence. Run. Okay. Still in existence. Mm -hmm. And um, she, let's see, do I have... I have on here. Um, she did so many things. Mm. Um, How about a couple more names? Uh, let's see. Who I else you got there? Uh, I was trying to see what else. I had made some notes on Mary McLeod Bethune. Um, mm. She had just done so many things. Um, a lot in education. A lot. She was a okay. strong believer in education. Okay. Who else you got? Um, well, George Washington Carver, was he in the early 1900s when he started his work as an inventor? And uh, Booker, Booker T. Washington also. Yeah, how about Booker yeah, T? Washington. You got anything on Booker T though? I don't have anything on Booker T because I, I didn't quite agree with him. So <laughs> you did what? <laughs> what, what wasn't he, he a botanist? He was he was different. He was into peanuts, wasn't he? Oh, no, why not was he not Washington. Okay. Washington, <laughs> Washington Carver. Why yeah. was he different? So. He was different. He had he had a different point of view. Right. Yeah. What was his point of view? I don't think he particularly felt strongly about blacks being educated. Hmm. I've never heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it did seem to be his yeah. position was, you know, sort of, uh, you know, you, uh, you sort of cast your lot where you are, yeah. so to speak. That yes. uh, that you, it, it wasn't a necessary requirement that you have, you know, grandiose sort of in his view, uh, sort of large aspiration mm -hmm. for uh, pulling oneself up. Goals by, and dreams yeah, to, to aspire to. You, you know, know that your 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 growth should be incremental. You know, that he seemed to be uh, one that advocated that incremental mm -hmm. growth and, and incremental uh, success, you know, and not to have this sort of, again, huge ambition to and, and mm -hmm. drive motivation to yeah. to go beyond your current stage, as mm -hmm. it were, and, and leap leapfrog into the future. I think yeah. his view was yeah. that we'll yeah. get there in the, you know, soon enough. But so, we, you know, we got to take it a step mm -hmm. at a time. And I think yeah. that, you know, no very few people would want to, would want to, aspire to uh, that kind of, yeah. uh, that's, that's, not your, that's not the dream that most people have. We're right. to get there one step at a time. You know, we all want to get there tomorrow and we all believe that we are capable of getting there, mm -hmm. you know, getting to mm -hmm. that higher level sooner versus later. Uh, he okay. didn't think we should go that far so fast. All right. Throw me another name. The, I've got a guy who, excuse me. Oh, yeah. No, I was going to ask him about his book. His well, I, I was going to mention that also. <laughs> ask, you, ask you about what? Your <laughs> book, your Black First. What, what about it? Who did you see in there? That's um, who did like, I see in there? Everybody's in there. That's really? Right. Everybody's in there. Well, let's see and if the guy everything did. that anyone did is in there. That, that, what that, are you that, concealing that, from us? What are you, what are you not sharing <laughs> with what? us? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's what we want to really you want. You want me to read the book? Yeah. Well, we don't have to read it, but you just. Sure, I mean, I just can't pull it apart no, and tell no, you. No, no, let's, let's see what I got it open to here. Uh-oh. It's open to, uh, uh, this is federal appointees. Mm. And, of course, it deals with federal appointees all the way back to, uh, uh, back to the 1800s. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and all these pages are federal mm -hmm. appointees. Leading up to current federal employees. Okay. The next section is on labor relations. Mm. And uh, here's a guy right up front here, Henry Highland Garner. Mm. You ever hear of him? Garner. No. Uh, 
1843. We won't go through it. 1843. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what were you thinking of, Paul? Huh? Oh, there was a. I, I, there's a, a someone whose name I don't have, but I, I'm wondering if he might be in the book. Mm -hmm. He was a a medical technician who worked with a famous heart surgeon mm. at Johns Hopkins, mm -hmm. and he apparently was the one who invented. Th this man had, had uh, the, the, the white surgeon had developed a, a procedure for dealing with uh, particularly children who have, have bl blue problem. And they had to uh, somehow change the structure of their hearts. Mm. But this man, uh, who was African American, was the one who developed the, the actual tools that were used mm -hmm. and, and who actually... Performed the first open heart surgery. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know who that is. Is he in the book? Is. Yeah. yeah. And but we've talked about we, him before. Yeah, but we picture. had him on our calendar. We had him on our right calendar. Yeah. We did. <laughs> we did. But I know this says... Don't forget Dr. Drew. Who that's going to say, that's that who I was thinking yeah. Yes. And, and, and yeah, Dr. Drew and the foundation of blood plasma. Yeah, yeah. And his all work in blood and a few other people. I am Richard S. McGee. Thank you for joining us for the first segment of Black History Month. We wish that you enjoy it, hope that you enjoy it, and will join us for the second section of Black History Month. <laughs>